Hello guys, it's Stephen here, back with another video. I hope you're all good, I hope you're all surviving, I hope you're all healthy during this quarantine time. I hope you're all looking after your loved ones, staying at home and washing your hands and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but today we're going to talk about Manchester City because I miss talking about Manchester City. I'm going to be hopefully ramping up the videos again. It took a while for me to digest this crazy new world that we're living in, but fingers crossed we're all back on track now and we can talk about football at very least on this channel. And today I'm going to do a very much uh, requested topic alone watch. This is for Khalid Al Khalid. Uh, is one of my biggest, biggest supporters on Patreon. Khalid, you're an absolute hero. Hopefully this video is enjoyable for Khalid. Thank you very much for helping me on Patreon. And also thank you for all these guys that have been helping recently, all these low, latest pledges. I've uh, got Ryan Ching and Antia Zapardi and James Kinningbill with $3. Then we've got Alvin Fraser, Zaka uh, Zachary Marco. Then we've got Jason Edwards, Robert593 and Andre Tessier. All those people have become patrons. And seriously, right about now, I can't uh, begin to express how much that means to me. I've lost basically loads of sponsors on this channel. Um, but that's what was always going to happen. So these guys are uh, helping keep this channel alive. Thank you so, so much. And I promise you, all the the rewards and everything will be bang up to date very very soon and um, once again thank you to Khalid Alk who's gone for the big tier to get one video a month in his topic and this is his topic alone watch so patreon.com forward slash esteem company if you want to help support this channel and keep me going uh, because I've got nothing else to do right now thank you very very much um but today, we're going to run through a whole bucket list of names. As you see, all the names at the side of the screen right now, this is only half of the names on the list. I'm going to do a part two tomorrow, but for today, it's going to have to be just these names because there's just simply too many to fit on the list at the side, and there's too many people to talk through. I'm going to start initially, though, with Aro Morich. Um, it's been a bit disappointment for Aaron Morwich. Now, if you don't know, the very talented Kosovan keeper went on loan to Nottingham Forest at the start of the season uh, to get some much-needed experience. He was very good last year in his little kind of run to the Carabao Cup final. Shame he didn't play in it, but he was good then when he was recalled uh, back, given the injury to Bravo. Um, but it hasn't gone well at all. Now, he's apparently got a bit of a reputation for being late and distant at Nottingham Forest, which isn't good. He started off as the number one, but he had a really shaky start to life at Forest and immediately was thrown to the bench, basically. Uh, Forest did a really weird thing in the summer where they signed a whole bunch of keepers uh, including I think it was a uh Samba, Bryce Samba, and he ended up being their number one instead, and he hasn't really had a look in since then. It's been a terrible loan for Mjoric, if being honest. He still has loads of talent, and City really do value him, but it's just not been good, and he needs to get a better loan next season. He's 21 now, he must have been hoping that this loan would have gone well, that he could get a Premier League loan next season or even be Edison's backup, but that's not going to happen. He needs a better move next year because this year has been a write-off, unfortunately. After that, Philip Sandler, um, the guy obviously had a couple of appearances last season for City. He went and joined Vinny over at Anderlecht, uh, part of uh, Vincent Company's project to get Anderlecht back where they belonged. Um, and he's done kind of okay, you know. It's been a really unfortunate season, though, because injuries seem to follow this lad around, unfortunately. Uh, he, had to, he did start, like, nine games and he was kind of uh, a big part of the team at the start of the season before he got a knee injury which they hoped wouldn't require surgery but then later went on to require uh, knee surgery around December and he's been out ever since then. Obviously, the league's been paused since then. Um, but he was part of the first team. He turned 23 recently. And I think, really, he's going to have to have a hell of a season next year if he gets past his injuries, whenever that's going to be, of course, to have a chance at Manchester City. I wouldn't think he's going to come back anytime soon. But he was playing regularly at a decent level. So that was some good signs. And hopefully, if he gets back and he plays uh, often alongside his company, he can learn from the very, very best. Um, but it doesn't look like he's going to be pressed any single time soon, really. Uh, next, on to Zach Steffen. He's been fantastic. He's been absolutely brilliant. He's been one of the best keepers over in the Bundesliga. Uh, he's been wonderful for Fortuna Dusseldorf. And honestly, their coach uh, said that the American, the 24-year-old American, has been basically the kind of player that they wouldn't have a chance of getting if it wasn't for this loan or age up. So they really like him, basically. And all the rumours now are that Zach Steffen could actually be Manchester City's number two next year with Claudio Bravo finally leaves, which is huge. I mean, it's been a, res a resounding success. There's not more to say other than that. I mean, there are some question marks still about his ability to pass the ball out in the way that Manchester City won, which is fair. But then again, uh, not many people can do what Edison does. But in terms of his shot stopping, his overall confidence in his game, he's a really good keeper. Uh, and he's been uh, his re reputation has risen and risen. A lot of people say he's better than Tim Howard, who's seen as one of the, the best uh, American goalkeepers of all time. Uh, and this guy's done well. He's done really, really well. After that, Tassinado Rabaio, another success story. Now, 
A lot of people really were impressed with him when he was on loan at West Bromwich Albion. And he looked a little bit leggy and gangly when he was at Manchester City. But he's really started to come into his own at Blackburn now. And Blackburn fans absolutely love him. He's been genuinely fantastic for them. Uh, he's grown out a little bit now. So he's not quite as lean as he once would. He's stronger. He's a lot more physical. And he looks a little bit faster as well. I think he's got confidence in his moves now. He's a lot more. Uh, he's got a lot more conviction. He's only 22. He's only 22. He's getting stronger. Uh, he's learning in a very physical league. And he's starting to bully people. He's got a good turn of pace. And some of those passes, honestly, uh, he's been shared on his own personal Twitter. Um, wonderful. He's breaking the lines, which he, he's always, that's what he did um, uh, when he was at the academy teams at Manchester City. And he's now starting to show that he can do it uh, at the level, uh, a good level in the championship, which is a very hard league to be in. Um, he's only 22, as I said before. you got to bear in mind that he's in no rush to be at the very peak of his game. Uh, Van Dijk, for example, was only playing against uh, Celtic until he was 24 when he signed for Southampton. So currently, uh, I would say that Adorabayo is playing at a diff more difficult level than Van Dijk was at the same age. So you got to bear these things in mind. I'm not saying he's going to reach that level, but the point is they're making is Van Dijk is now like 28 and he's at his peak. You've got a lot of time left. Uh, Adorabayo maybe is one loan, one great loan move next season away from being a Manchester City player. He seriously is that good. A really good player. Uh, Angelino, onto him. This is a quick one. Um, it was a weird loan that he went on the first place, in my humble opinion. He's gone to RB Leipzig, uh, who are doing very well in the Bundesliga. Um, and he's bossing it there. He's playing basically as a wing back, which is probably what he should have, probably what he needed at Manchester City. But Nagelsmann loves him. Um, he's, he tore Spurs to pieces as well in the Champions League. Uh, he gets forward. Um, he looks confident. He's making Making chances, he's getting assists, he's even scored. Uh, really good loan for him. Now, it, it can obviously remain to be seen whether he'll come back to Manchester City next year or not, but largely he's done very, very well and he will get a very good move. Uh, if it's not to RB Leipzig, someone will come, for him, come in for him. He's a very good player, Angelino. I think he just maybe didn't really adapt to life here initially. Sometimes a player can start badly and then struggle to get out of that malaise. And even though he was never terrible, I don't think, he just he couldn't really get, uh, get his... Claws into this team. It didn't seem to happen for him, but he's doing very well out on loan. So, fingers crossed, his career ends up really well. Um, Pedro Paro, another Spanish fullback. Uh, we actually signed him from Girona uh, in the summer. He was obviously a part of the City Football Group. I can't imagine that transfer was particularly hard to finalise. Like, hello, me, can we sign your player? Yes, me, you can sign him. Would have been pretty easy. But we got him, um, and he was hugely rated. Uh, last year, he was one of the breakthrough stars of the Liga. Uh, a young right-back with loads of pace, loads of intelligence, that caused teams loads of problems, even the big teams. Uh, and he City signed him and sent him immediately on loan to Real Valid the lead. It's just not worked, you know? There's been a lot of concern about this loan move, unfortunately. He's had 13 appearances, but he's gone from being the first choice right back quickly down to the third choice right back, and he's just not happy at all there, which is a shame. Sometimes loans can't uh, don't work for whatever reason. Um, but now the rumours are that Girona want to sign him back down to the second tier. I mean, the irony is that... Um, he stepped into Maffeo's shoes, Pablo Maffeo, initially when he left his loan uh, for Girona. And now apparently he's going to come back and replace Maffeo at Girona once again if it happens. I don't know. It's been a weird one for him. The City Football Group signing hasn't gone quite well. Uh, Patrick Roberts... <laughs> It's been a disaster for him at Norwich, if we're being honest. He joined Norwich, didn't make any appearances really in the Premier League. No, I think he made 23 minutes of sub appearances for Norwich uh, in the Premier League. And then he went and joined Middlesbrough in January. And he did all right, apparently. He did pretty well. He started to impress them, as he often does really when he joins a loan and he gets a chance. He's very skillful. Um, but obviously then football was kind of cancelled. He made three appearances. He got an assist. Um, but time is kind of running out for him to make an impact. He's 23 now. Uh, it feels like ever since he extended that loan at Celtic, things have gone worse and worse for him. At that point is when he should have made the jump, but it didn't happen. Uh, he didn't get much game time with Girona either. Uh, but when he did, he did all right. But Patrick Roberts is back in the championship and it's not really getting any football at the moment because football's cancelled. So it's been uh, a weird year for him, unfortunately. Alex Garcia, yeah, that was a weird move. He joined Royal XL Muscron over in uh, the Junior Pro, Pro League uh, over in Belgium. And it's, he's done well. He's apparently he's 23 games. He's got five goals, three assists. He's one of their key players, from what I can tell. But you would expect him to be. Last year, he was a semi-regular player for Girona in La Liga. So this was a backward step for him big time. It really was, unfortunately. Like... He's gone from playing pretty often in the Liga to being uh, a regular now for a mid-table team in Belgium. Like, I mean, surely he wants more than that. He should want more than that. And his contract is up in the summer, so he will be leaving. It's pretty obvious. He's 22 now. Uh, he said this quote the other day. He said, honestly, I'm not really thinking about my future. I played a lot of games and clubs can see what I've done. The teams that are interested know me. I think I've shown good things and proved that I can play in another team next year. It won't be Manchester City, unfortunately, but he's going to have a good career at least. Hopefully he gets a, a good club. Um... Onto, onto Antti Palaversa. Uh, 
He's a regular over at Unstead, which I'd never even heard of, really, to be honest. No, I'd heard of him, but, you know, we signed him from, is it Hadrick Split? We got him from the uh, very, very highly rated uh, defensive midfielder. He got unfortunate. Um, he did get an injury really on early on the season. Uh, then came back around November. Got and got into the team once again, but obviously football then got cancelled. Um, he's kind of in and out of the team. But he has 19 appearances. He's been a regular for them when he's been fit. Uh, Unstead in general have struggled over in Belgium. They're like 15th out of 16 teams, so it hasn't been going well for them. Though he apparently has press, impressed some fans every now and then. Uh, he's going to have to be more though, obviously, than impressed for a lower Belgium team to get anywhere near Manchester City. So it looks like he's a while away from being involved at Manchester City, unfortunately. Uh, Jack Harrison. What more can we say? He plays every single week, basically. He's a key squad player for Leeds. Sometimes on the bench, but mostly often starting. Uh, he's skillful. Uh, he's, he's attacking. He scores goals. He creates us, gets assists. Uh, he's 23 now, and he's uh, loving life with Bielsa, you know. He's a very good chance he could be in the Premier League when it finally gets going, whenever next season is, if Leeds go up. Jack Harrison is a good player. He's a good player, and at some point, he'll be in the Premier League. Won't be from Manchester City, but who knows? It could be with Leeds. Uh, he's had a very good loan there, and he seems to be pretty liked in general. Uh, this one's an interesting one. Uh, Daniel Azani. A lot of people won't know who he is, but he signed for um, Celtic on loan after Manchester City got him for um, from Melbourne City, basically. I think he was really good for Melbourne City in a breakout thing when he was about 18. Really skillful, little nimble kind of player. Think Patrick Roberts, basically. Uh, but then, unfortunately, he got a shitload of injuries, like loads of injuries, and he's not played at all in like a year and a half now, which is a massive, massive shame for him. Uh, he's had a terrible two-year uh, period there, basically. And Well, the rumours are, apparently, that Celtic might actually try and extend his loan and give him an actual chance, because he's not really had a chance to... Uh, show his talent um, uh, at Celtic, unfortunately. But the guys had no football whatsoever, so it's been a write-off for him. On to Joe Latibodier, the young England youth international. He's 20. He's on loan at FC 20 uh, in the Eredivisie, and he's been a, uh, a very distant squad player, unfortunately. Five appearances. Um, a lot of them came together as well. He had a brief run at right back where he got a goal and assist, actually. Um, but then he was straight out of the team. It's not even a great 20 side either. They're currently 14 out of 18 teams. Uh, in the league, and he's not really played well. He's a centre back, and he struggled uh, to get games. Unfortunately, I really like Joel a lot. He was very good at one point for our academy sides, but it's just not really worked out for him. A, a few injuries here and there, and this loan hasn't gone that great. You need a better loan next year, but once again, he looks further and further away from Manchester City's first team. Sadly, and finally on to Matt Smith. Um, I really like Matt Smith. He's a really clever, uh, intelligent midfielder. He was excellent at FC20 last season. Uh, they loved him, the fans. Absolutely loved him. He was brilliant, even though it was a second tier of football uh, in the Dutch league. Uh, that got him into the Welsh squad, and he's played plenty of times for Ryan Giggs' Welsh team and done very, very well. Now, this was meant to be a big move for him. He joined QPR on loan, but sadly, he couldn't really get a game. He had a few early games on, and then he was often on the bench, then not in the squad at all, and he's basically been a backup player to the first team. That prompted uh, a recall on and then alone to Charlton. And it's kind of been the same thing. He's had a couple of games, but then he's on the bench and then sometimes off the bench. It's not really been a great spell in general for Matt Smith. I really like Matt Smith. I think he's a bit of a dark horse, but these loans just haven't worked out for him. And some of these loans in general are very hit and miss that City do. Like, I mean, I'm not really overly impressed with City's loan strategy. I think it's far too erratic. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, tomorrow there's going to be loads more players, uh, including the likes of... Uh, uh, Claudio Gomez, um, Lucas De Major, Thierry Ambrose, Yangel Herrera and all that. So make sure you tune back for that. I hope you enjoyed this loan watch. Um, long story short, a few play players have impressed. Uh, Adam Rubio, in particular Zach Steffen, uh, have really, really shone out of the ones that we mentioned today. But there'll be more tomorrow, as I said. Thank you to everyone who's supporting this channel. As I said, everything's fallen through, unfortunately. Views have gone. Uh, sponsors have fallen through. But I've got you guys and all these patrons here. These help keep this channel going. If you want to help and get a shout out and get some benefits. I've got mugs for the $20 tier, people. But I'm not going to be able to post them, unfortunately, at the moment. They are sat over there. I've got these Steam Company mugs. And as soon as this dies down, I promise I'll post those to the patrons you're waiting for them. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash esteem company. Go and like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. Go check out my daily vlog channel where I talk about isolation and all that kind of stuff. For now, I'll see you tomorrow.